I'm with your disability rep, Roy Rickstrew. You can see it right here, yourdisabilityrep.com. There's the QR code when you're going to want more information. We'll show this again in just a couple of minutes. Good to see you again. Likewise, likewise. You know, we've, we've talked about disabilities and the things that are considered, you know, in an application. Now we're going to look at why things can be denied because it doesn't always, there's my app, I, I'm fine. Right. And first of all, you know, let me say this, it always is helpful to hire a representative, have somebody help you with these things that can kind of lead you through this process. But some of the top five reasons why it is that folks are denied. First of all, is confusion about your job skills. And this is one of these things that always amazes me as a representative. Mm -hmm. Social Security sends out a work history report um, with questionnaire to fill out about the jobs you've done. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't turn this in, which leads Social Security to be confused about what it is you actually have done. Uh -huh. And that unclear work history, uncertainty about the length of your employment, not having a good understanding of your job duties, and the work being misclassified ultimately can have a direct bearing, a negative bearing on your case. I'm, I'm going to say this, this stuff leads me to think that they're not going to necessarily just take <coughs> your word for it. Well, th this is true to some measure. Uh, yeah. um, but, you know, we see a lot of jobs that look very similar to the layman, but from Social Security's perspective, they're different. Uh, and so we think about it, an orderly, a CNA, a CMA who passes meds, right. and a bath aid. They all have different physical requirements. They all have different skill levels. You know, if you pass medication, there's an extra layer of skill that's necessary Absolutely. than if you're simply doing baths for somebody. The next thing here is the lifestyles, activities, and hobbies. And I tease people, these are the things we shouldn't see in your medical records, but a lot of times that I do. And so the problem with this is we may tell the doctor that we twisted our ankle at the river. Right. Right. In somebody's mind, they're thinking you're canoeing, you're kayaking, you're hiking at the river. In reality, you may have slipped and fallen on the disability ramp at the river. Um, so we kind of get these half stories a lot of times in okay. the medical records. Um, a lot of times it looks like there's an overestimate of what we've done, right? You may have slipped and said you fell off of a ladder, and we conjure up images of a 20-foot ladder, right. when in reality you may have been on a step stool. But we don't see that in the record, and it leads to this overestimate estimate of what activities we're actually doing. Mm -hmm. And it was just simply lack the description of what that activity looks like. Yeah, so there are a lot of boxes that need to be checked properly. That's, that's correct. To and help when, he'll avoid a denial. Right. Anytime you talk with your medical professional, you've got to give them enough information to understand the nature of your injury or your complaint, right. how you got here. You know, we don't want to let someone's imagination fill in the gaps as to what that injury actually looks like. Um, just simply lacking the objective me medical evidence is, is probably the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. um, this can sometimes be a limited access to care, although with the Medicaid program expanding, it's a lot easier to get to care. True. Um, and then, of course, the absence of specialty care. So, you know, maybe you were referred for injections in your back. You don't think they're going to work. You don't give that a good shot. That helps, that keeps Social Security from understanding how stubborn and hard to treat your condition is if we don't follow through with the care and give those things a go. Okay, but this last one here, I mean, that... I mean, it, it almost sounds hand in glove with what you were just <laughs> talking about. Yeah, that's correct. Poor follow through. Is, is a really big deal. And people get prescriptions they don't ever fill. Um, a lot of times you'll see referrals made to specialists. They never go. They don't keep the appointments that they have. All of those things give the impression that your condition is more manageable by yourself without having to enlist extra care. Uh -huh. In other words, how bad is it really? Yeah, so what I'm hearing from all that, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about, okay, failure to follow. Mm -hmm. There it is right there. These are other things that psh, it'll get kicked out. It can be. That's right. And, you know, Social Security won't kick you out necessarily for not keeping your doctor's appointments, but you're losing that opportunity to demonstrate and to document your case. Mm -hmm. And when the burden of proof is on you to prove that you're disabled, you need all the help that you can get by way of keeping these doctor's appointments, seeing how well that treatment course might help to restore functioning. The more failures you have in care, the more stubborn and hard to treat your condition is, and the more traction it gets with Social Security. They're, they're I'm sure, looking for some form of, uh, you know, you are making an effort to that's, make this work. 
That's right, and I tell people all the time, you know, if you're doing extra things at home, hot baths, hot showers, heating pads, ice packs, talk to your doctor about those things because we want them to know that the medication that they're giving you isn't enough and you're having to take these extra steps yourself. All right, unclear records, another thing, you've got to keep records. Yeah, that's correct. You just got to keep up with your care. Um, a lot of times people go in for a cold or a flu, they don't talk about their primary disability. Mm -hmm. The doctor then marks that your back was free of symptoms, your range of motion was fine because you didn't specifically complain about those things, uh, which leads to inconsistency in your file. We have one visit where you can't move at all, the next visit you're with no limitations. Social Security doesn't know how to balance those two things out a lot of times. It looks like your pain is not prevalent all the time, but it's kind of more hit and miss and it's treated differently. There you can see the information. There's your QR code, the phone number. Just talk to Roy. Yeah, we're still doing our free seminars. Um, you can give us a call here and RSVP for those. More tips, tricks, talk about what we're going to do to try to help with your Social Security case. We try to give folks things they can walk away with on their own. Even if they don't employ me, it's still a good opportunity for folks to come and learn. All right. Give them a call.